The astronauts and cosmonauts from all over the globe have risked their lives for space exploration and discovery. This is the Top 10 Space Program Accidents. And welcome to another episode of The Twisted Ten. I got the finger point. I like it, Ron. I know that's my cue. That's like the five, four, and then three, two. And then the finger point. I know, I know that's my time to time to go. So welcome back to The Twisted Ten. We, we got a fucking pack studio tonight. This is... This is giving me some nostalgia goosebumps. Feels I'm, good. I'm gonna end up with a boner here in a minute. Feels good. In studio with me tonight is obviously my boys Ron and Josh. What's up, guys? What's up, fellas? But we have a very, very special guest. Well, he's not really a guest. We have a very special fourth member of the show on air with us tonight, <laughs> Mr. Tack Van Sickle. Hey, everybody. Welcome What's up? back, buddy. Oh, thanks. How are you? Let's get this out of the way now. Um, plug your podcast. Wow. What's that? <laughs> Wow. Plug your podcast. Oh, it's not like you said unplug your podcast. Well, yeah, that, oh. but no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> You're a hater. Well, yeah. well. We're not haters. It's all right. It's, well, I, I, we respect the art. It's and okay. I, it. I allow Ron to give me, plus, plus he's been a guest like three times. That's true. No, I've you're asked you to, say you to be on the show, Adam, several times. And you're just like, eh. Uh-oh. Nah. Uh-oh. Calling me on the carpet on the show. <laughs> it's um, been like over a year now. You threw I've some shade. You. He's got a bigger umbrella. <laughs> Did you hear I was going to do, uh, I was going to guest on the Fish Nerds podcast. And I'm going to guest on Hysteria 51 podcast. Did cool. you hear that? I was just checking. <laughs> That's, That's cool. <laughs> Ooh, burn. And uh, those hosts of those shows have both been on my I, show. Yeah, I know. I know. Both Clay Groves <laughs> and was it John or uh, Brent? Both. You got Brent, both of them on there? And separately, I've had Brent on once, I had Brent's wife on once, I had Brent and his wife on once, and I had John on once, and then, of course, Clay Groves on once. Well. Isn't Brent, uh, Brent's <clears throat> wife like a fan of the Brady Bunch? Mm-hmm. She's an awesome guest. Oh, I'm going to have her back. She's awesome. That's cool. All right. I, attack. I'll make this commitment on air. Let me make sure my mic is down for the. No, I'll make this commitment <laughs> on air. I give you my word. Before, <clears throat> depending on your schedule, um, before the end of January, because I do, I got those other two shows, I think in December some time frame, yeah. um, before the end of January, if you'll have me, I'll be honored <laughs> to be a guest host with you on the Very Brady Podcast. <laughs> oh. You heard it here, folks. <laughs> but then so, you, you should, want say, you should say nothing. Hey, so we're good. We're Adam, good. Adam. <laughs> Adam. <laughs> You what? still want me to edit all this out, right? Yeah, of course. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> you got that little one. Yeah. All right, okay, cool. Well, what makes it difficult, too, is that we also record the same nights almost the same time right oh, now. Ron and Josh, I hate to tell you this, boys, but I'm going to have to cancel one. No. <laughs> we'll figure, we'll figure it out. Show. We'll figure it out. We can do we'll this with two people. You can go. I can turn everything on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was hard. Yeah, tonight. <laughs> So tonight we're having a little bit of an audio problem and Tax here. He's the other kind of audio techie guy that has helped me wire this studio as well as some in the past. <laughs> and I'm trying to figure out how to get our discord um, set up for Josh because Josh is running the discord server for us tonight. By the way, we stream every show live. So if you don't want it. So our episodes publish a few weeks after the fact. However, we we broadcast live in our discord server. So if you want to listen live during one of the studio recordings, <clears throat> Go to twisted10.com and there's a Discord button. Click that and you can join. You don't have to download any apps unless you want to. But anyway, I was trying to figure out how to get the fucking audio working for him. And Tax like, mm-hmm. do you need a little help? Because, uh, you know, I can help you with the wiring and sourcing. <laughs> he didn't say it all smug. And, no, he didn't. He was very <laughs> polite. So I'm like, fuck, I know, because this comes out of here and this cable runs down here and I'm following the cable and fucking thing is not plugged into anything. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. The, <laughs> the, the funny part was. Yeah, okay, signal flow. So it's this cable here. Literally, that was the cable not plugged in. <laughs> the very, the first, very one. first one. <laughs> there was no signal flow, a signal stop. Okay. Yeah. Some, sometimes you just, like, do you remember watching your dad fuck with the VCR? I thought you were <laughs> just going to exactly say, what I was. I was do you ever like, watch your dad fuck? When, <laughs> and you just, you, it just, it's happening, and you know, they're like, oh, I just press the input button on this remote, and it's going to fix the problem. <laughs> but he doesn't want help, so you don't. That's you literally offer, what I was you thinking offer about a couple of times. 
when he says no, you say, okay. I was literally Ooh. thinking about my dad when he would have like this, his speakers try to plug into his old TV and then he had two VCRs so he could copy movies. <laughs> Your right. dad's a pirate. Rented. Yeah. Oh my God. Hundreds of movies. He, he would. Rent, oh, he was very particular too, right? He'd always put like he would do the slow play, right? So like oh you know, the one eight hour tape would be one two hour movie. Oh yes, exactly. He was very specific. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, exactly. You wanted quality. Yeah, it was all about the quality. So yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. I remember that. Have you shown your dad Netflix? <laughs> uh, oh yeah, he has Netflix. <laughs> this is back no. when we were kids. Oh, he he can't live without Netflix and YouTube now. That's it. <laughs> of course. That's it. He's like fuck a bunch it's of the videos. American way. <laughs> yes, and then a Blu-ray, of course. So. Yeah, yeah. Who buys Blu-ray anymore, though? That's because Josh just got his new PlayStation. We talked about that a little bit on the last after show. Ooh, Those nice. can be found at Patreon.com/slash Twisted Ten. See the plug? See this snuck in the plug? There we go. Um, <laughs> he, Josh talked about his his new PlayStation, and he got the one with the uh, with the Blu-ray player in it, mm-hmm. which led to the question: Who the hell buys Blu-rays anymore? So I guess your seventy five year old men. Well, your dad needs a PlayStation Five, well, or <laughs> it's not, no, it's no, not he just doesn't. a Blu-ray player, though, right? It's a Ultra, whatever it's called. It's a dual air Blu-ray. I mean, it's a special Blu-ray player. And by special, I mean better. It's not that you can go buy one for 80 bucks. You can just go buy a dual air Blu-ray gotcha, player. Gotcha, gotcha. But it also burns uh, CDs, so you can download music from Napster and burn your CD <laughs> to take it into uh, your car. I'm a LimeWire guy. <laughs> Everybody bear, knows bear that. Share. Come on, bear share. <laughs> I didn't realize you guys liked Vibe. I liked Kazaa or Kaza <laughs> or whatever, whatever it was. <laughs> what is that? That was one too. Was was what, it? That was one. Yeah. It was good. But what was good about that is I got as much porn off that as I got music. I was <laughs> okay. More, oh, way yeah, more was, porn than music. Was, <laughs> let's be real. <laughs> and then I would make my own little porn cuts and like sell them to people. Five bucks. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> yeah, you brought those into Kenny Shoe. I remember. Hell I yeah, know. bro. <laughs> <laughs> would you like the swallow edit? Here you go. <laughs> Number one, two, or three. <laughs> oh. uh, it's director's cut. All right. So, holy uh, shit. Let's uh, let, why don't you guys, what do you say we get into the damn show? Um, okay. I am not your host tonight. I just hosted this past Sunday. We were recording a little bit off schedule again for those listening in Discord um, because we have, we wanted to make sure we got our special guest. Uh, or special member <laughs> on to a night he can record with us. I have so. a special member. You do have a special My mom member. told me not to show it to anybody, though. So. <laughs> so, Ron, Josh, you guys aren't hosting tonight either, I assume, right? Nope. Uh, nope. nope. Not right. me. That nope. leaves our fourth host or second host or whatever position you want to set first host. Whatever position you want to be in, Tack. <laughs> whatever position you want. <laughs> My special member. <laughs> Tack, the show is yours. Ah, oh, cool. I'm, I'm sorry. Before you tear in, Tack, I have to ask. Did Adam just say that he hosted in our last recording session? He oh, did. I did. I was wrong. Yeah, it was a week prior to that. I did Are you trying to get out of your list next week? Hang on. <laughs> no, no. Next is Ron. So I'm not. I'm Sunday is Ron. Sunday. Oh, okay. And then a week from that is is me okay again, that'll be the week that he's sure to call us and tell us he can't do it <laughs> can't, i can't do it but he'll wait till the last the, minute the kids yeah. are going to space or something i don't yeah, know yeah it's okay, 702 I'm, okay sorry guys <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm sorry tack i just i want to make sure i heard that it's right good. Yeah, my ass handed to me is, uh, to pick on, we, we had an agreement guys just pick on tack not me you should isn't, see what our agreement says. um isn't this episode a special episode <laughs> this is 101 yeah oh you missed oh, 100, buddy. Missed 100. <laughs> oh, hey, hence sorry. the empty bottle of uh, champagne. Two here. bottles. Yeah, two one bottles. there, one oh, over there. We killed a couple bottles. Yes, yeah. we did. Cool, so 101, all right. <laughs> hey, you started the first 100, you will start the second 100. <laughs> that's a good point. Oh, yeah, that's fun. <laughs> it, was, that's it, was cool. a, it was only a small homage, because now that we don't, uh, we don't number our episodes, so we, call it, we celebrated that. it, but... We celebrated it in our fashion. Getting drunk. <laughs> a little tipsy towards the end Getting of the night. Getting drunk, Three of us, two bottles of champagne. That was a little bubbly. Champagne hits you different too, man. It's it a does. different kind Drink of with a buzz. couple light weights. Good. <laughs> I could have champagne smells like I could have uh, honestly we needed like four bottles. <laughs> we really like one Two bottle each. each. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Tack. This is your show, buddy. All right. All right. So if you remember every time I do a list, I always write a little Sure. Story, but ahead of time, not story. But what number know. did you start with? <laughs> I do it correctly. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing the show a long time, <clears throat> old pro, but it's been a long time since I've done one. So, <laughs> all right. So, living on the space coast, <laughs> we are privileged to be around so much space exploration and history from the Apollo days to the space shuttle days to now the private sector of space exploration. 
it's exciting to be a part of it. Wouldn't you all agree? Sure. Yes. Of course. Uh, The astronauts and cosmonauts from all over the globe have risked their lives for space exploration and discovery. Heroes are created right here in Florida, as well as other countries and other space programs from all over the world. However, with much discovery has come some failure. Oh, yeah. Sadly, some failures have had devastating outcomes where lives are lost, but not in vain. But learning from these failures is what gets us closer to new discoveries and safer space exploration. Um, and I have a little quote here. Failure is not an option or failure. Sorry. Failure is an option here. If things are not failing, you're not innovating enough, said Elon Musk. Yeah, that NASA is <clears throat> famous for that, too. They, they say that every failure um, is another step forward because they can learn mm-hmm. from that. They learn from all their mistakes and move forward. Hurry up and fail. Yeah, yeah. That's the whole. So this is the top 10 space program accidents Ooh. in chronological order. So, oh, damn. So, All right. Any twists on your list tonight? No twists. No twists. No twists. Okay. Nice. This is going to be a good one. Well, <laughs> so sad. It's going to be a sad one. It'll be a sad one. But there's also, they're not, some of these aren't like so devastating. There's, some of them are kind of comical. Some so. of them too. Oh, I'm going to be curious because there's some that were like under government wraps in other countries. And I'm curious to see if you've got a couple of those other countries <laughs> listed in here. We shall see. Are we Ooh. ready to begin? Yeah, and this is everywhere in the world, right? Not just yeah, NASA, all, not just yeah, US. Right, all over the world. Right. Okay, cool. The whole yeah. world. So this is in chronological order, starting with number 10. Number, number 10. 10. <laughs> On January 27th, 1967, Apollo 1, which... Yep. But anybody remembers Apollo 1. I don't remember it. I don't remember it. <laughs> I wasn't remembers there. what it is. Like, I'm <laughs> old. I'm not that old. Is <laughs> that a horse? That's a, that, that's that was an old a, horse. That was a horse and Scooby-Doo had a baby. That was what that was. <laughs> All right. Apollo 1. So, <clears throat> U.S. Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Gus Grissom, U.S. Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Edward Higgins, White, and U.S. Air Force Lieutenant Commander Roger B. Chaffee, sit inside Apollo 1 capsule on top of a Saturn V rocket. They were sitting, setting up for a rehearsal launch that day in preparation for the upcoming launch a few days out. Go ahead and silence my phone there, Josh. I'm sorry, <laughs> did you need a reminder? <laughs> what do you mean? Silence your phone. <laughs> sorry. Don't look at it's me like day. it's my fault your phone's making noise. <laughs> <laughs> well, normally I have my phone like way far away, but it's like right near the mic. I'm just kidding. <laughs> get him, get him. <laughs> they entered the command module with fully pressure, pressured suits and were strapped to their seats and hooked up to the spacecraft's oxygen and communication systems. As the countdown went on, the crew members were using the time to run through their checklists when a momentary increase of AC bus 2 voltage occurred. Nine seconds later, one of the astronauts exclaimed, Hey, fire or flame. It's kind of unclear. Uh, this was followed by two seconds of scuffling ar- sounds through Grissom's open microphone. This was immediately followed by someone saying, I've or we've got a fire in the cockpit. After 6.8 seconds of silence, um, badly garbled transmission was heard by various listeners. Um, um, and they heard things like, um, they're fighting bad fire. Let's get out, open her up. Um, we've got a bad fire. Get out. We're burning. Um, and things like that. Yeah, but there was a lot going on. It's hard to hear everything. Transmission transmission lasted five seconds and ended with a cry of pain. All three astronauts were trapped in the capsule and perished in the fire. The fire causes a 20-month delay in the first man Apollo flight. It is believed to have been triggered by a spark from faulty electrical wiring. Now, one thing I've added to... At the end of each one of these is what have we learned from this? Oh, that's good. That's a good twist. Yeah. So what we what what was learned? Uh, flammable materials no longer fill inside of crew capsules. Hatches are now easier to open, so astronauts can escape in seconds in case of an emergency. That was number ten. Yeah, that's somber. <laughs> so, there's there's. <clears throat> I mean, I'm sure you're going to get to some more advancements in some of the um, life saving protective features but uh that has vastly changed today Mm -hmm. those vehicles i think to include some of the russian the soyuz i think has this now too have some remarkably advanced 
life saving procedures that those things can do. Mm -hmm. So we'll, I won't, I don't want to spoil anything you might come up with later, but yeah, those, there, there's lots of stuff about how those astronauts are far, far better protected before it used to be race to space, get up there, no matter what the, you know, I don't want to mm -hmm. say no matter what, but the consequences of the safety side of the house are a lot more focused on now than they were back in the sixties. And that's, you know, that's yeah. just maturity and evolution of the space program. Sure. Yeah. That I, you know, I talk about your, episode you did oh my goodness it was a while ago now um the un unexplained signals episode that you did oh uh, yeah we start talking about astronaut safety and i just i remember the audio clip that you played it was if i remember correctly a couple of italian guys who picked up the signal it was like a russian female oh yeah yeah that's that just like that has stuck with me. I wasn't kidding the other day when I said I still talk about that episode that Tack did. I still tell people to go listen. Oh, to did that I do that one. episode? That was you. Yeah, yeah that was like yours. Something, sounds like something I would do. Yeah, your yeah, unexplained yeah. signals. That was yeah, yeah. that was a wild episode. I'm sorry. Not please continue. Oh no, I could talk about your the old show all night long. <laughs> all <laughs> night long. All, all night. night. There we go. We had a, <laughs> almost a quorum here. <laughs> I heard that song on the radio once. Twist that. This um, fucking young guy. Is that a horse again? Uh, I feel like it's, it's weird. It's like Josh is younger than us, but I feel like half the time he's like, I'm like older now. I'm just a young adult, and Josh is my dad. He doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't really tell me what I'm supposed to do with my life, but he just sits back and I just feel like I'm getting the judgment. He just, just the eyes. Josh well, is the best I mean, at giving the judgmental eyes. Uh, of he's anybody the judgmental I've ever seen. Eye king. Oh, yes. He yeah. Is. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. It's actually. amazing. If you watch him, actually, the longer his beard gets, the harder the gaze is. I don't know what the combination <laughs> is. It weighs my eyes down. It's oh, that, that, that makes sense. That makes sense. All right, sorry, got off subject there. There you go. Sorry. All right. <laughs> Number nine. Number nine. April nine. twenty. What? I said nine. <laughs> oh. <laughs> April twenty fourth, nineteen sixty seven. Soyuz one. Anybody? Soyuz making some advancements in safety. <laughs> Sorry, that's really bad. That wasn't as, as good as Koala. Oh, uh, Koala. You got a Koala bitch? Um, I, I, I don't bitch. remember what happened to Soyuz 1. This is going to be new to me. All right. So, Vladimir Kam Kamarov uh, was one of Soviet Russia's first group of cosmonauts selected to attempt space travel. He was also the first person to enter outer space twice, though his second time would sadly be his last. The mission plan for Soyuz 1 was a difficult one. The spacecraft was to orbit Earth and then have a rendezvous with Soyuz 2. The two vehicles would have precisely matched their orbital. Sorry, I didn't mean to laugh. I'm not laughing at this. My mind was going somewhere else because of what they're about to do. Uh, uh, the two vehicles would have precisely matched their <laughs> orbital velocities to test the first step in docking. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing because wow. I don't I don't know what's so wow. funny. Sorry. Dirty dog. You. I'm sorry. I shouldn't be laughing. You know, people. don't you just love with two astronauts, Doc? <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine what happens if you open up the suit down there and in in, uh, in a vacuum? Does your dong just kind of flop around or just probably sucks in, freezes off? Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, sorry. We, You're we, rock hard, we, dude. We lost a life here. So sorry, uh, sorry. That's disrespectful. I apologize. You started laughing. I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, wait a minute. <laughs> let's get serious, guys. Come on. <laughs> Suck them in, boys, for the Ghostbusters. That's right. Okay, so uh, the two vehicles would have precisely matched their orbital <laughs> velocities to test the first step in docking two spacecraft together. After Kamora Vladimir was in orbit around Earth, and it was... Time for Soyuz 2 to launch and meet him. Problems with the spacecraft that had been largely ignored became apparent, and the Soyuz 2 mission was halted. The mission control was able to determine that one of the solar panels on Soyuz 1 had not deployed and was limiting the power to the spacecraft dramatically. Equipment that needed the power from the solar panel was malfunctioning, creating difficulties in controlling the vehicle. It was decided that the mission could not continue, and Vladimir began preparing for his return to Earth. After some trouble breaching the atmosphere, the parachutes on Soyuz 1 were deployed, but did not unfold correctly, making the spacecraft impossible to slow down. Oh. Soyuz 1 crashed into the Earth on April 24, 1967, killing cos cosmonaut Vladimir um, 
and was the first fatality in spaceflight, and since his death, has been honored with memorials and monuments near the site of the crash and in Russia for his bravery and skill. So what was learned was a much um, improved Soyuz program emerged from the 18-month delay, mirroring the improvements made also with the Apollo program and their Apollo 1 tragedy as well. So hmm. so the Apollo 1 never got off the ground. Soyuz <laughs> 2? You said this was Soyuz 2? It was Soyuz 1 and 2 together. Were they it, separate rockets or was it the same? Yeah, it was view? separate things. So Soyuz 1 launched up with the once astronaut. they got in orbit, and Soyuz 2 was going to launch. Ah, uh, okay, okay. And then okay. they were going to try docking <clears throat> together, and that was the whole plan. But Soyuz 2, I don't think ever made it off the ground. So Because he was having problems before. It, they uh, were ready. Okay, copy. Copy. Yeah. Okay. Damn. <laughs> Man, he just had a one-two punch there, unfortunately. So yeah. you, your, your entire solar panel array doesn't expand. Right. Providing needed much needed power, and then you're like, "Fuck it! All right, I'm gonna bail. I'm gonna go back to the safety of Earth." And then mm-hmm. that doesn't that doesn't work out to your yeah to your favor either. What year was that one? Damn, that was in sixty sixty seven. Yeah, sixty seven. Okay. Just to remind the listeners, low Earth orbit, where Vladimir was during this, um, you're traveling at anywhere between fifteen thousand and like eighteen thousand. I'm Cliff Clavin it again, aren't I? God damn it, I tell didn't us, need to do it. Tell, tell Normie about it. Yeah, so now, yeah, now you know that, uh, Yeah, but, you know uh, that, Normie. <laughs> the, the, they're, you're, you're hauling ass. So to maintain that zero gravity um, free fall, because that's what you're basically doing, you're constantly falling around the the um, gravity pull of Earth, you have to be traveling between fifteen and 18,000 miles per hour. So right. you're booking it. So the atmosphere will slow you down a little bit, but if you had no, no brakes on that, at least, you know, if there's ever anything to think positively about it, there, he never never felt it. It, it was right. done instantly over, and it's at least ludicrous speed. Yeah, basically, yes. <laughs> he went plaid. <laughs> I've gone to plaid. <laughs> All right, we good? Moving yeah, on. yeah, yeah. Number eight. Number, Number eight. eight. All right. Eight. November fourteenth, nineteen sixty nine. Apollo twelve. <laughs> <sighs> so, this one is kind of a. Goofy one. So, just after the launch, lightning struck the Saturn V launch vehicle at 6,400 feet in the air, 36.5 seconds into launch, and again at 14,400 feet at 52 seconds post-launch. The astronauts on board, which included Commander Charles Pete Conrad, Lunar Module Pilot Alan Bean, and Commander Module Pilot Dick Gordon, reported uh, seeing a bright flash and later even said that they felt the lightning strike. Hmm. Uh, The first strike was even visible to the spectating audience, creating a stir and concern about the safety of the mission. But despite the scare, it was determined in a quick check of all the spacecraft systems that no damage was done to the vehicle, with the exception of losing power to some inessential systems. And it set off to the moon just as planned. It was the return to Earth that uh, caused a little more trouble. As the spacecraft splashed down into the ocean during its return to Earth, a strong wave hit the body of the air or the, the craft, causing it to jostle and swing from its parachutes. This force toppled a 16 millimeter film camera from where it was secured into astronaut Alan Bean's head, causing a one inch gash. Damn. Bean turned out a okay though, as Conrad quickly served as medic and bandaged the wound. So this is after splashdown. Yeah, after splashdown. So, I mean, there's actually, you can actually go online and watch the video of the lightning strikes. It's actually pretty cool. (laughs) Um, And uh, so what we learned is launches are now set um, planned with weather. Yeah, don't don't launch during a fucking hurricane. (laughs) Don't launch during a storm. Good idea. Yeah. And so, and I guess the other thing we learned probably is to secure equipment better, probably. Uh, yeah, I, I would I imagine. <laughs> I don't want to get ahead of you, but it, maybe this is one of the things that led to Velcro. Right? Ooh. Ooh. Velcro is big. Like, I was in submarines in the Navy, too. Velcro is like fucking, it's like candy, porn, cigarettes, and fucking Velcro. Those are like your currency <laughs> out at sea. That's submarine currency <laughs> right there for you. Huh. Yeah. Cause I, cause I know that like that whole hook and latch fabric, you know, what we call Velcro that came from the space program, right? That, I don't was, know. that was a space program invention. That's a fantastic question. I've, I thought, I think that's a, um, what's a company that invents everything? 
There's a NASA. No, 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 no. Remember, like pans and everything are made from NASA technology. No, there's (laughs) NASA gets cited for a lot of that stuff. (laughs) No, but no, there's a what company am I thinking? Not Johnson and Johnson. Um, it's big. They're big, just like that. They've got like like Dupont. Dupont. Thank you. Yeah, I think Velcro (laughs) is a Dupont. Who do you work for again? I know it's not Dupont, but it's like a competitor. Isn't that a competitor? No, probably not. I don't remember. Dupont was one of the companies that's uh, wanted to. That tested some prisoners with chemicals, and they. Oh, uh, I do remember that. Yeah, and 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 a, thro- a throwback to an old show of the uh, top ten uh, unethical human experiments. Yeah, that was like <laughs> they Russia. were one of the they were one of the co- yeah the, the like one Russia I pretended it was yeah. Russia, but it actually was Dupont. They were like, hey, uh, we need some people to uh, see if these chemicals that are going to be around our employees is going to fuck them up. <laughs> How about we use these prisoners here? Like, okay, yep. cool. Let's pour this in his eye. Yeah. Let's see what <laughs> I want to say that Velcro was an accidental invention. Are you looking it, it up, Josh? I do. I have the answer. It was a creation of Swiss engineer um, Georges de Mestrel. And it was 1941. He was taking a walk in the woods and he got uh, the burrs, little grass oh, yeah, yeah. of some sort down here. That, that stuck to his pants. And it started him down to say, hey, maybe I could make something like this that just sticks mm. to shit. Did he, did he work for any big company or was it just a solo it just, inventor? It was just him. I mean, I, I haven't I haven't gone too far in. Um, oh, he invented Velcro. Oh, he did. Okay, cool. And the cool stuck was how George Demestro invented the Velcro brand fastener. What year was that? 1941. It's hmm. so a little bit ahead of the space program. So. Yeah. But I was mistaken. I, I, if you had asked me how much money I'd put down that NASA or the space program invented Velcro, I would have. I would have bet like 10, 15 yeah. bucks. Maybe that's one of those Mandela things. Yeah, Cause I be. thought the same thing in my head too. I thought, yeah, that sounds right. There we go. Hey, look at us fixing Mandela effects or there's right. a lot of things that NASA <laughs> right has here done. on the show. A lot of things NASA has invented over the years and have been, you know, leading. And I say it's NASA as an agency. It's really the, the scientists, the, you know, engineers that have come up with these inventions solo or in their teams, but they've been contracted and employed for NASA. But um, not not as much as people give them credit. You know, here's the best best example of this. And I'll tangent you for only a moment. The United States government, to include led by NASA, discovered that when you go to space, the typical ink pen does not work. You have to have some sort of pressurized capsule inside the pen to Mm. do that. They spent over $150,000 in researching this special pen that can, then this is back in the day, this is in the 60s, that can push ink out and pressurize the ink so you don't have to worry about the ink being used by gravity. Right. Um, do you know what Russia did? They took a pencil. <laughs> you know, the funny thing you mentioned about that pen is, uh, I, I feel like I keep going, throwing to this show, but there was a Seinfeld show about that pen. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. His, uh, his dad, I think his dad's friend or something had the pen and then gave the pen to Jerry and then made such a big freaking deal about the fact that he had given him nice. this pen that they, you could write in it writes space upside with, down, writes yeah. upside down. Yeah. That was a big deal. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I made the numbers up, but the story is funny and true. <laughs> and this is why they Sorry, beat us Josh. to space. Just so, yeah. <laughs> but do you know how much taking that pencil into space costs them? No. What? Almost an entire system or an almost entire vehicle. Well, because of the carbon in it or something? Because graphite is electrically conductive. So if you've got Ooh. graphite shavings floating around your cabin, it's flammable. So there, Merca. Uh, Merca. <laughs> so Maybe somebody they, said that and we're like, no, you can't bring a pencil. Duh. And they're like, all right, so we got to spend money and figure this out. You know what that really means is NASA said, oh, we got to come up with a reason why we spent so much money on this fucking pen. <laughs> make it make it bad. It's electrically conducted, but so is half the stuff on their suit. No, just run with it. Half, half the shit in the capsule is flammable. <laughs> You're sitting on top of we learn nothing nitrogen, from one? kerosene. <laughs> All right, sorry. Maybe Jack. they brought a pencil and then came in Apollo one, and that's what happened. Uh, that's what the bad. lightning struck. Yes, the the twelve. Pencil. Yes, or whatever, whichever one it was. All right, number seven. Number seven. 1970. We all know this one. Apollo 13. It's the one Tom Hanks went up on. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> when he was just a wee little lad. That's right. Kevin Bacon didn't get to go. And yeah. I think that's right. Anyway, the U.S. lunar mission Apollo 13 loses the use of an oxygen tank necessary to supply air and power. A three-man crew successfully uses a lunar... 
uses uses the loose lunar shuttle tickets said. lunar yeah. shuttle tickets sorry i was gonna let it airplane I was, too <laughs> i was gonna let it slide but you said <laughs> uses the loose and I'm like, what is that when first it uses of use uses <sighs> okay, apollo 13 <laughs> loses the use there we go of an oxygen tank necessary to supply and power the three men crew three man crew successfully uses the lunar module anyway they use the lunar module as a lifeboat circling the moon and then returning safely to earth it is the first in-flight failure in the u.s space program the crew had a balance sorry no you're cut good this, cut this part off. Make sure I make it sound cooler and funnier. <laughs> the crew. I'll just replace you with Obama's voice the whole no, time. No, just replace him right. This section of the audio, just put the movie audio in here. Okay. From Apollo 3. <laughs> nice. He used to have a problem. Uh, the crew had to balance the challenge of getting home and the ch- uh, with the challenge of preserving power to on Aquarius. I can't talk. After they performed a crucial burn to point the spacecraft back towards Earth, the crew powered down every non-essential system in the spacecraft. Without a source of heat, cabin pressures pressures quickly dropped down close to freezing. Some food became inedible. The crew also rationed water to make sure Aquarius, operating for longer than it was designed, would have enough liquid to cool its hardware down. And Aquarius was pretty cramped as it was designed to hold two people, not three. So what was learned was uh, numerous design changes were made in the Apollo service module and command module on a subsequent missions in the Apollo program. The changes include another cryo oxygen tank that could be isolated to only supply the crew, removing all cryo tank fans and wiring, removing thermostats from cryo tanks and changing the type of heat tubes at a 400 amp hour lunar module descent stage battery entering water storage bags to the command module. Did that read like stereo you instructions made, or what? You, you, you <laughs> made it through. That's fine. That, th- I mean, that movie did, sh- of course, it was Spielberg. Go watch the movie. Spielberg, right? Who did that? Uh, no, I want to say it was uh, Ron Howard. Was I it think. Ron Howard? No. Oh. Well, anyway, they, they did a really good job <clears throat> of portraying it and the accuracy. I think I've heard Neil deGrasse Tyson talk about it a little bit as well. The accuracy that was portrayed in the movie was pretty fucking close. There were a few, you know, issues and anomalies, but it was pretty, pretty spot on accurate. So, yeah, that, that, that was a that was a good movie. On balls accurate. Mm. When um, what number is the Martian on your list? <laughs> oh, did that not really happen? Sorry. You know, there were actually people. <laughs> Josh, who- Josh looked at me like he doesn't really think that happened. Just, right? He gave me that look. Like, you know what it is? I think I think there's just too much stuff between us. I think you just like you see my eyes over like the pop oh, filter and stuff. Literally and stuff I, between. Like li- yeah, I think there's just literally too much stuff. And I think what <laughs> I you get is like me looking at you when you talk because that's the courteous thing to do. I know I spent all night because I'm, I'm like physically facing straight at Adam, so I just I kind of stare at Adam. I pull a testicle out every once in a while. We're all. Facing Adam sees. keeps it interesting. Adam moves the chair, so we're all facing him. <laughs> it's like, what do you face your furniture in your t- living room at the TV? Right. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just messing with you, Josh. I don't, I don't. Sure? I didn't know there was so much. I didn't know there was yeah. so much shit between you guys. <laughs> oh, since you've gone, because you, you two used to have, uh, you and you and Josh used to attack. You and Josh used to have this little, you know, hove, love, <laughs> hove late, love <laughs> hate relationship. Um, well, Ron yes has replaced no. you since you've been doing Not your very, really, very podcast. Because, like I like Josh, but Josh hated me because I was interrupted. Wow. And, which I feel like we just, I just who did Who fucking again. told him? <laughs> <laughs> who told, hang on. Oh, You know who told him? Our listeners. That's who told him. <laughs> I oh. told him. But no, Ron's, Ron's taking your, your seat on that. It's, they'll go back and forth. It's great. It's great comedy in here. <laughs> gotcha. Ready? No. Ready. Number six. Number six. Number six. July 1975, mm-hmm. Apollo Soyuz Test Project. Mm. I, that's not what I thought it was. I'm trying to <laughs> guess the, the situation based on the year. I thought about doing that as like okay, a little like fun two, game, right? but like, I don't know if you guys would, I thought it would be a lot of like, I don't fucking know. I like I don't think Let's I watch Adam win the world. game. That's, yeah. that's what that would have been. <laughs> yeah. Yay, I win. I'd be like, no, 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 everybody shut up. I think I got this. And you guys would be like, <laughs> no, I, I don't would, fucking know. I would piss off Ron <laughs> and Josh by Adam, Detective Adam in it too much and <laughs> they would get frustrated. Gotcha. They would still lose, but they would get frustrated. <laughs> All right. Apollo Soyuz Test Project. 
The Apollo Soyuz test project in July 1975 was a feat of both space travel and politics. Ron, get ready. It was the first. <laughs> uh, it was the first joint U.S. and Soviet space flight, um, and marked the end of the space race between the two countries. The mission itself went over almost flawlessly, until dot dot dot. Dun dun dun. <laughs> The two spacecraft, the American holding three astronauts and the Soviet, two cosmonauts, met in orbit around Earth and docked to each other, (laughs) allowing the space explorers to travel between the vehicles. They exchanged pleasantries and gifts and executed some experiments. Each group like speak- frankincense and myrrh. Sorry, I don't know why. <laughs> it just sounded funny when you said they exchange gifts. Oh, oh, each group um, speaking in the other's native language to soothe communications and blur the barriers between the two countries. And one of them even said, you know what I don't see up here? Borders? No. Oh, <laughs> oh God. It's true, though. <laughs> Remember, in 1975, we were fighting the Russians. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Well, sort of. No, um, they didn't say that. So after 44 hours, they parted, and after a few more days, the two spacecraft began their descents to Earth. It was during the reentry that a malfunction with the RCS reaction control system that controls the altitude caused poisonous uh, nitrogen tetroxide to enter the cabin where the American um, where the American Apollo astronauts were seated. Luckily, the cabin was ventilated once the spacecraft landed and none of the astronauts were fatally injured. Were they, they in their suits during the reentry? I think they ha- had to be back then. I don't think they were in pressurized suits. Okay. Uh, they were rushed to the hospital and were found to have developed a form of chemically caused pneumonia, but all recovered within weeks. What did we learn? So uh, Vance D. Brand, the Apollo astronaut, took the blame, but Major General Thomas P. Stafford said that all three crewmen were must share responsibility for the mishap that led poison gas fumes into their spacecraft as they returned to Earth. I'll take the responsibility, Mr. Brand told a new... Um, oh, sorry. To- I'll take the responsibility, Mr. Brand told news conference. Uh, The switches should have been turned on and they weren't. He also went on to say that very bad noise and radio communications in the cabin might have contributed to the error. So he just forgot to flip on the fans, the exhaust fan or something? Yeah, yeah, something like that. And I guess and it might have been said during a checklist, but they said it was really hard to hear. Let me ask you this. For this mission, because I don't, I do not, I never have read a single thing about this. This is the first time I've ever heard about this, this Soyuz and Apollo combination mission. They each <clears> launched from their own location. Yeah. They met in space. Mm-hmm. They exchanged, ple- exchanged pleasantries. They docked. Yeah. They docked. Um, <laughs> three sets of happy astronauts. Um, then they returned back to Earth separately or in yes. the same vehicle? No, separately. They okay. undocked. Okay. All and right. And then came back down separately. Okay, all right. That part I was, I was mis. I guess I misunderstood. They were I, I trying thought, to do like the Mir. You remember the Mir space station? Yeah, it's for basically sure. It was early Mir stuff. So okay, hmm. interesting. Didn't the Mir end up? They ended up crashing that space station purposely into yeah. the water, right? Yes, it's called deorbiting. Yes, they deorbited it, and they, okay, Cliff. No, they, <laughs> they had, Taco Bell actually sponsored that. That was an amazing thing. And I'm dead serious. Taco about Bell this. sponsored the sort deorbiting of, of the Mir. S- sort of. Taco Bell picked the location where um, NASA had projected, mathematically projected, that Mir would splash down. So Mir was so big that it wasn't all going to burn up in the atmosphere. Most of it would, but there'll be a pretty big fucking section of it, like a school bus size section that would make it through and it would splash down into the ocean. So Taco Bell had set up a virtual target in the ocean. If it hits bullseye in this virtual target of, you know, this GPS location, then everyone in the world gets free tacos or something. And then if it hits on the outside, then you get something. It's, it, they had a, it was a gimmick. It was fucking brilliant, though, because it was it went viral back in the day for a viral can be when it I think it was in the late 90s or something. And uh, yeah, no, it didn't didn't even come close. So oh. nobody, nobody got free tacos. Sorry to ruin the. <laughs> ruin well, the you did like they did like a three inch circle. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they moved the target. Yeah, you know, a lot of people thought they had a real target out in the middle of the fucking ocean. 
which is what's because <laughs> a lot of people are dense. <laughs> yes, this is true. <laughs> I don't think that's true. Not <laughs> if you think it's false. I have some news for you. Well, um, speaking I'm of one like, of the dense ones. <laughs> are there any conspiracy theories on that one that it was sabotage of any kind? Is there any no. conspiracy about that? I didn't find anything. But the I'm internet sure is you, the internet. I'm sure you can find something, though. Okay. <laughs> I didn't find anything. If it happened now, there definitely would be. I mean, well, the, the hole in the, uh, <laughs> in the Russian piece of the International Space Station. I've talked about that a few times. The hole that turned out to be nothing more than manufacturing mishap on Earth, not, in, not even in space, was blamed... Six ways but Sunday on the U.S. It was in the Russian side, and it, it was a Tulsa. good Star Trek Next Generation episode, something like that, <laughs> between them and the Klingons. Well, the astronauts in the capsule themselves said, uh, "Yeah, it was our fault." <laughs> so you know, can't trust those dirty Klingons. That's Same. right. <laughs> Well, that's it. This is where we take our break. All right, um, Tack. Before we go to break, yeah, why don't you plug officially plug your podcast so our listeners can hear it. <laughs> All right. Well, I co-host a podcast called The Very Brady Podcast with Jimmy Klein. And basically, it's a Brady Bunch rewatch show. We watch an episode and we break it down. We break down the bunch one episode at a time. And uh, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. We come up with some fun Brady Bunch conspiracies. Uh, we just talk shit. Happily make fun of the show in a good <laughs> way. Some uh, listeners write in and they say, you guys just hate the show. Like, no, oh, don't. <laughs> yeah, he actually has, like, if you go through his Apple reviews, he actually has one. It'd be nice if people hosted this that actually liked the show. <laughs> we <do>. One star. <laughs> Ron, yeah. Signed, Ron Canifer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we hate it so much, we're dedicating an entire <laughs> right. podcast to it. <laughs> exactly. Well, no, that's, that's it. Cool. Go check it out. Uh, that's cool. Hey, Anywhere hey. you hear this podcast, this that one's available too. As we go into break, do you hear how well he rolled through that set of lines? But his pod, he's been stumbling over words all night tonight. Yeah, but the Brady Bunch well, stuff, should, boy, he nailed it. He well, he used to hear me because, <laughs> like, doing the Brady Bunch show, I'm I were constantly reading too. And uh, normally, I'm when I'm doing that show, my script quote script is up on a big screen, and I'm sitting comfortably. It's this big. <laughs> now I'm reading from a phone on the other side of a microphone. Pop pop. And I need my glasses. Like to borrow so my to kinda, readers. Maybe <laughs> you have glasses. I I need reading glasses. Yeah. Well, oh, but you you don't own a pair. As he's yeah. as oh, he's I pouring his Metamucil out. All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> I think they play safe bets that I never get this off my chest. But since then I learned better Though it took me forever Born and raised in a pasture Until family disaster The only other road Went straight southern for the east coast But ever since did I arrived All they talk about was leaving And I could care less about some changing of the seasons And they ain't never no lift nowhere They thought that it was freezing They don't know what they believe in I never change a thing because you see me all the way till the judgment day in the city as by the sea that's where I where I should be and if it's drowning well I'll be swimming in the city as by the Welcome back to the Twisted Ten with oh, our, yeah. our very special host. Very, very special host. Tack, we're honored to have you in the oh, studio. Oh, stop. No, we are. And I'm serious about that. It's, you know, us boys, we're kind of like brothers and we give each other flack and shit and sometimes make each other cry. But the point is, we respect you. We we love your talent on the show. You're remarkable and we want you to be in here more than more than possible. So... You know, that's just, oh, just when it can happen, it can happen. That. And we, we, we want to go out of our way to make sure it does happen. I appreciate that. Thank you. That's very nice to say. Yeah, man. All right. So <clears throat> take show back over. Give us a recap on 10 through uh, Sorry, six. I'm verklempt. Okay. <laughs> Talk amongst <laughs> yourselves. <laughs> oh yeah. Recap. That's right. We got to do that. All right. So let's recap. So number 10 was Apollo one. Mm -hmm. Number nine was Soyuz one. Number eight was Apollo 12. Number seven was Apollo 13. Houston, we have a problem. 
Problem. <laughs> <laughs> that was ten. Uh, number six was Apollo Soyuz test project. Which number was Event Horizon? <laughs> oh no, that wasn't one. That's number sixty-nine. <clears throat> what about two thousand one Space Odyssey? What that's, number that's is that? That's one. Oh, Come sorry, on, dude. Spoilers. <laughs> God. <laughs> Can even get through these. So now we're at number five. Number five. Number five. Starting getting into our lifetimes now, where we actually remember things. Yes. Now. <laughs> so this happened on there's, January. There's that Scooby horse. <laughs> <laughs> January twenty eighth, nineteen eighty six. Yep. Say it. Challenger. Challenger. Yeah, Challenger. I know where I was. Seven. Palm Bay. Uh, Palm Bay. Uh, Blue Creek. <laughs> Palm Bay no. High. Palm Bay <laughs> Elementary. No. no, Palm Bay <laughs> Elementary School. Uh, we went outside. I witnessed this uh, when my parents and I were living down in Palm Bay. Very cool. Yeah. Where, I mean, where, where was, were you at, Ron? I was going to, I was in, well, in elementary level, but I was going to St. Mary's Catholic School. And yes, we went outside yeah. to. Where's that? Is that here? That's here as well. Yeah, in Rockledge. Oh, Rockledge. Oh, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. What you, Tack? Where were you? I was not in Florida, so I didn't see it. I hadn't moved to Florida yet. Actually, I think I might have been in. Spain, maybe it was just a couple years so, before you moved here. We got to throw yeah. the obvious out. It was like here. a year before I moved here. Josh, where were you? Hmm, 1986. Mm, I'd have to. I wasn't. I, I don't. I was daddy's ball sack. <laughs> yeah, but I was hanging out my daddy's ball sack still. <laughs> oh, youngin. <laughs> All right, so let's read about it. So, just over a minute after the space shuttle lifted off, a malfunction in the spacecraft O rings rubber seals that separated its rocket boosters caused a fire to start that destabilized the boosters and spread up the rocket itself. The shuttle was moving faster than the speed of sound and quickly began to break apart. The disaster led to the deaths of all astronauts on board, including civilian Kristen McAuliffe, a participant in NASA's Teacher in Space project, who was to teach classes and perform experiments while in space. The extended mission of the shuttle included deployment of satellites and the test of tools for studying astronomy in Halley's Comet. Halley's Comet, Halley's Comet, which is it? I always said Halley. Both. Yeah. Halley's is what I grew up on. Right. Yeah. Halley's is what, like, Discovery calls it now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the shuttle's launch was not widely televised, but the explosion and breakup of the shuttle was visible to spectators on the ground. The launch itself performed in 26 degrees Fahrenheit weather, was predicted to encounter issues by members of the engineering team who knew of the dangers posed to the O-rings by such low temperatures. Focus on that again. This is in east coast of Florida, central Florida, Mm -hmm. east coast side. 26 degrees Fahrenheit is very, very unheard of. That's like once a decade we'll get to that Once a decade temps, yeah. Yeah. Very Mm -hmm. unusual. Uh, Despite vocalizing these concerns, the mission continued as planned because NASA was against delaying the shuttle's launch anymore, as it had already been delayed multiple times. Disaster resulted in the temporary suspension of the space shuttle program and creation of the Rogers Commission to determine the cause and fault of the disaster. So what we learned is the O-rings lost elasticity under 54 degrees. This was actually is what's required, the proper temperature oh, outside. Uh, for launching, so they but, said with those O rings, nothing under fifty four. <clears throat> so. But didn't we also recently learn because there was a recent Netflix? I don't know if anybody's seen the recent Netflix. Uh, I haven't watched it yet, but I oh, it's to. really good. Yeah, they. Well, they, what is it? Can you keep, what Netflix? What? Sorry, sorry. Continue. That's it. That's all you get. <laughs> <laughs> There's a recent um, Netflix documentary on the Challenger. Challenger? Yeah, really? yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's great. It just oh, came sh- out. It just came they out. Were, I gotta stop watching has, the Flash and go watch. Has this. anybody <laughs> seen it or? Just, just I me. Know. Oh wow! I I'm planned so to. really surprised you guys haven't. I didn't but, know it was out. Um, one of the things they talk about is those O rings. They weren't just having issues because of temperature. Like they were already having like burn through issues on those O rings, and we're trying to figure out how to fix it. And we're already like screaming to, at the top of their lungs, "Hey, we really need to ground all these shuttles." Until we figure out what the hell is going on, hmm. I won't say any more beyond that because nobody, you guys haven't seen it. But uh, well, also, I, it's, it's not really a spoiler. We know the rocket blue. <laughs> well, no, I meant, I meant just hey, to hey, give hey, you the, the details of you know everything. But um, interesting. Is this where we can say our really completely tasteless jokes that were going around after the 
After the shuttle blew. Hey, no, you know we're, what we're color her eyes were? <laughs> yeah, that one. What how, What color? <laughs> you guys are horrible. <laughs> what about... I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> what about uh, yeah, I, let's see, I'm getting my. I'm getting the father's eyes from Josh already. <laughs> so you're just, you can say just it. You're listen. editing it so you can cut it out later. I can cut oh, it. But that's, not, that's no fun. I wanted no, to leave it. I in. think this is a win. You say something controversial. The show gets all the attention and you get all the negative flack. Oh, okay, that works It's a me. win. All right, so uh, how many astronauts <laughs> can you fit in an... A oh, can you fit... Damn, I fucked up the joke. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> it's all right. You can cut that part out. Say it again. Uh, how many How many astronauts can you fit in a car? <laughs> uh, something about the ashtray at this point. Yeah, I fucked it up. <laughs> Eleven. Two in the front, two in the back, seven in the ashtray, but I fucked it up. But uh, anyway. We can insert some fake laughter here for yeah, you. Yeah, it's done. <laughs> it's all getting cut out because it was wow, horrible. Wow, that was awful. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. I mean, joke, I don't even, right? The delivery, the content, just... <laughs> Just like that it was, was 15 seconds. I don't get of, back. Of pain. <laughs> <laughs> and what was yours about the, the color of her eyes? Uh, the teacher, Miss Miss McCullough. Chris McCull Christy McCullough. Christy McCullough. Christy McCullough, you know what color her eyes were? What color? Blue. Blue. <laughs> one blue left, one blue right. Damn, Ron. It's the same. I was just telling you. Mean you mean the same color as Kurt Cobain's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Ironic. They had that in common. <laughs> yes. Interesting. <laughs> Let's Do you know who on. Kurt Cobain is, Josh? Or was that before <laughs> your Cobain time? Was a singer in a band. Yes, was a singer in a band called Nirvana. <laughs> he had a YouTube channel, right? Yeah, I think so. He was unplugged <laughs> anyway. Was a big YouTuber. He had an unplugged oh. special. There is an entire YouTube. conspiracy. Well, consp speaking of conspiracies, there's yeah. a lot of conspiracies about the shuttle. About about um, uh, I almost said the other one. Is it on about Parlor? Challenger. Are they on Parlor? <laughs> easy, <laughs> easy boy. I just asked yeah. if they were on Parlor. This That's guy's it. on Parlor more than anybody else. He's got like he's, two thousand followers oh, already. He's, he's feeding the trolls. I mean, that's fine, and that's it's what he likes to do. I've he enjoys up like it twice since I've got an account, and I'm like, because all I follow so far is like gamers. So to me, all it is is a gaming fucking site. To I'm me, waiting for the dust to settle from all this so political like, this bullshit. Is dumb. I'm yeah. not. I might look at it eventually, but not once this political stuff stops with Try, this thing. Then I might look at it again. I, you know, trust me. I promise. Days. If you go onto enough, like onto enough gaming things and say, "Oh, I really thought that NES game was cool back in the day," blah blah blah. Someone will comment on, "Fuck off, commie <laughs> Democrat, Illuminati, baby killer." I promise you, it Wait will happen. Wait a second. People I have disagreements you. on social media. No, I promise you, you will get <laughs> stuff like that on the most. Random thing ever. I'm like, holy shit! What the hell? Oh yeah, of course, here? Ron. It's 100 free speech. Yeah. All right. So, <clears throat> <laughs> uh, I don't really even remember where I was going with that. Parla kind of took over the. I mean, Ron kind of took over the conversation. Now there. you said there there are a lot of conspiracy theories about the space shuttle, uh, yeah. the Challenger. That's yeah. where you were going yeah, with that. But there was something else he said that it tied into it. Fuck it. It's all right. It doesn't matter at this point. Anyway, right. the the uh, yeah the the. I don't even I really don't remember where I was going I was trying to pick that back up but I have no clue where I was going with that space is good social media is bad you I were, wrapped it up you were literally getting ready to say something about about um, conspiracy theories I thought it was something around the shuttle with Kirk Cobain conspiracy oh, theories oh yeah tying the two together yeah. oh okay mm -hmm. alright my, it, that <laughs> fell almost as hard as Ron's joke. Are, so. <laughs> no, are there really conspiracy theories that tie the two together? No, no, no. They don't tie them together. They're, <laughs> they're associated with the each hell? other because they're both asinine. They're both insane. The, the Kurt Cobain one might be a little more based in some kind of possible what are you reality. Talking? But oh, are you talking she about killed the him. I'm telling you. The yeah. Courtney Love stuff. Dude, yeah. that's She didn't personally kill him. You know what? That could be a whole twist to 10 right there. The Hollywood conspiracy theories. That, that, that would, would be, be an interesting one. one. That would be a fun Once one. Once upon a time in Hollywood. I might have to take that one. That would yeah, be not the, I'm not the right guy for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, like this guy named Hanks. Ah, who the fuck? Josh is he? will tell us all about the the conspiracy theories of the Disney Channel. <laughs> <laughs> you know oh, what though? It's the last time we watched uh, TV. Coco Melon makes hundreds of millions of dollars every year for their YouTube channel. And I don't know who Coco Melon is. You don't. Josh does. I promise you, Josh does. Yeah. It's just because of the age of the kids. That's all. That's it's, all it is. It's remarkable. It's. I can't believe how much money they make for animations. Hundreds of millions of views on this, whatever. Anyway, sorry. Number four. There we go. Good rain back. <laughs> Bringing it back. Number four. 1995. I don't have yep. a date, but it's just 1995. Mirror 18. Space explorers need to stay in good physical health during their time in space. Because of the, this necessity, space stations have exercise equipment that astronauts and cosmonauts can use to stay fit. During a mission to the Mir Space Station in 1995, astronaut Norman Thagard... Norm! 
<laughs> was attempting to do just that with a piece of exercise equipment for performing deep knee bends. The equipment used a strap of elastic that is secured to the to a foot in order to in, to create resistance. While Thaggard was exercising, one of the straps snapped off his foot and flew upward, hitting him in the eye. After the initial shock of the injury, Thaggard was in pain and had trouble looking at light, something hard to avoid in space, after being prescribed steroid eye drops, which apparently the space station had readily available. Thaggard's eye began to heal and all was back to normal. <laughs> so it, it did this in space? Yeah. yeah. Like, it fa- like was it like slow-mo, like... No. Oh no! No. <laughs> no the, the, so the the kinetic energy of that thing would fuck it. It pop you just like it would here. It's just it has no resistance. There's no gravity resisting it at all. Not that it would resist here either. Have you ever you see the videos of somebody jumping on like one of those long bands suspended between two trees and then missing their footing and knocks them in the nuts or something? Same hmm. concept, but it hit him in the eyeball. That sucks. So what we learned was uh, check the strength of your elastic bands before you use them, I guess. So I don't know. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Minor injury. I mean, even but people now use resistance bands to work well, out. We so. went from the Challenger to got popped in the eye with a rubber band. Hey, it was a mishap in space. It so. was. You know, the interesting part about that, too, is um, what would be kind of neat to hear is what do they have for medical attention in space what kind of supplies would they have obviously they had steroidal eye drops i I guess i get that in case some other kind of contaminants get in the eye because so much stuff is floating around up there yeah but what kind of you know would they have defibrillators i guess they probably would i'm sure would they have Mm -hmm. you know things to set bones and i guess they probably would i guess a lot of a lot of weight goes into that they're all trained on how to do all of those things yeah so so makes Hmm. sense And it may not be on your list because maybe we don't know about it. I wonder what kind of medical emergencies have maybe happened to people up in space that we just didn't find out about. Anybody's had mild heart attacks. I don't know this one. (laughs) Didn't anybody? (laughs) Nice. Anybody had like maybe a mild heart attack? Maybe something they didn't know. Maybe they had a little bit of chest pain and they came back down and realized, you know, by the way, you had a heart attack. You had a stroke. You had a wonder if anything like that's happened and Hmm. we're just not aware of it. Well, we know about the bone density loss. So for astronauts that are on the space station or in orbit for extended stays so i think the first Scott kelly <laughs> yeah yeah 100 i think the first we talked about him last week actually yep. yeah because his brother his is brother doing, became like senator yeah so was arizona it, yeah. mark became um, yes. senator you lose you literally lose uh bone density your your bones shrink and become more brittle the longer you stay in uh, zero gravity what about your boner <laughs> no, it's just like rock hard, buddy. Strong like bull. The whole time you're in space, is rock hard. <laughs> yeah. Nice. It's like permanent you know, Viagra. They, they actually shoot has, each other with it. That has led me. You know. They you dock know with it. That they have performed the experiments <laughs> in space. of sex in space. You know that that's been a scientific experiment sure. that somebody has done. Why, where's the fucking white papers pregnant, on that? Can you get pregnant in space? It's a good question. What, Would the sperm know where to go? Well, I mean, why wouldn't they? But can they go anywhere? And like, how would a pregnancy be in space? Like... Do you think it'd be awesome for women, or do you think would it not work well because you need gravity? I, I, that's a fantastic question. Can you give birth in space? I bet you be, could give birth in space. I bet you women would love to be pregnant in space. I bet you that's probably fantastic. Yeah, but I, I would imagine that some parts of how the biology of pregnancy works mm-hmm. has a certain necessity of gravity that it, we've evolved with. I bet some part of that has to do with gravity, like the fluid inside the baby's lungs, the, the, mm. how the whole process, I bet there's something, I don't know what it is, <laughs> but I bet there's something there that has to do with, you know, how gravity suspends something or holds something down. Go back to the sex and space question. That, was more <laughs> that part is more fun. Yeah, yeah. That do more you think fun. anybody's tried that yet? I, you know, they have to have, you, think? you know, as many women have been up in space, well, I guess men, men can have sex with men, but that's not my point. Right. I, I can imagine that that experiment has taken place. It would be interesting. Can you imagine trying to do it in zero gravity? You know what? This is you a can't get search. friction. Like that would be because you'd be like, oh, oh yeah. So, oh, so who do they fuck? Mm. Look it up. You have like, to like hold on to a wall. So that's your assignment today. Have sex with Steve. <laughs> like, okay, like, <laughs> what? Uh, can you imagine the ground operators? Hey, what on, he, wait, what no, he just that. said was, "There's been plenty of women in space. It has to have happened." Yeah. So, uh, yes, we'd like to commence. Uh, uh, wait, sorry. Um, uh, discovery. This is Houston. Uh, astronaut Kelly 
you are go for penetration. <laughs> Astronaut <laughs> Kelly, you are go for penetration. Go for penetration. <laughs> Yeehaw. <laughs> All right, Tack, I pulled it. I pulled it up. All right. There is officially no evidence to support or in contradiction of either the NASA space program or the Russian space program of astronauts having sex in space in any official or unofficial or secret missions right. um, that have been documented and publicly As expected. released. But I just remembered something. I don't know if you're about to talk about no, it. No, do it. Do it. Say it. Um, you, the People have had sex in zero gravity. Remember the vomit the, comet? The vomit comet? Because yeah. there's like porn that was shot on there a couple times. I didn't know that. I forgot to look what that up. What is the vomit this comet? This, that's what they... Well, you, it's your episode. You take it. Okay. You cliff it up a little well, bit. Well, the, the vomit <laughs> comet is that plane that goes up and it goes like up to, I don't know, like 50,000 feet or whatever. And then it just does a, a drop. Oh, to make it... To simulate zero, weightlessness. Simulate zero gravity. Like that's how they shot Apollo 13. They, put, they, they built the inside of this thing to look like the inside of, um, you know, the... Capsule? Capsule. Thank you. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I got you. <laughs> so, and that's how they shot Apollo 13 when it was in free fall. That's when they would roll cameras and they would be able to float around and all that kind of shit. Cool. So it's kind of neat. So despite the advent of mixed gender crews in 1983, that's when the women started going up with men in space. Not to say men can have meant sex with men. However, um, I was more asking about the biological intercourse between yeah. men and women. Um, there, there seems to have... So far, they seem to have behaved themselves in orbit. Um, this is according to a Russian cosmonaut. Um, several, you know, there's there's a lot of rumors about it um, from former astronauts that just simply allude to, you know, it happening. However, no one has ever officially gone on record and said, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we fucked. So it's happened and they just haven't told us. <laughs> the sex, Ron, was out of this world. Oh, oh boom. Hi <laughs> you knew that was coming. Oh, another one. <laughs> All right, I apologize for tangenting All into right. a perverted topic. I wonder if they would have, I mean, I guess they have downtime now, right? After that mutiny in the, was it, 60s or whatever? That is the best cum shot ever. The best finishing move ever. Can you, you imagine can the for distance? Like 40 feet away. Dude. You, you could you could really shoot that nut into infinity if you had an open window. And beyond. <laughs> <laughs> infinity and beyond. How quickly can they, like, pressurize, like, the... Uh, What's it called? That door? The the hatch? Well, you know, like, you know, you get the... Talk about blowing the hatch. The door? <laughs> like the, the door? Like an airlock? Airlock, thank you. Yeah, yeah. How quickly Josh, can you Josh pressurize got the you. airlock? <laughs> to where you um, can, like, shoot it kind of slow and, like, okay, open the door. <laughs> now shut it. Pressurize it quickly. It's and not like it's a, still going. It's not like a fart in a car. You can't roll them up, roll them down. <laughs> it, it doesn't work that way, buddy. It's a, It the, probably takes a while to doors. pressurize. It's two doors, too, by the way. It's Well, I got you, but right. I know one door shuts. The, the cum is still flying through the air slowly out the hatch. I prefer semen. This is a professional. I'm sorry. <laughs> <All right. laughs> the semen... Hmm. Anyway, I don't know. Those are see. Those are some some groundbreaking experiments we should propose yeah. to NASA in their open symposiums. We should bring those those questions to yeah, the table, and then maybe like when this sperm flies <clears throat> through the air and just you get it out into space and it keeps going. We want to see what it's like when. Oh, you, I know where you're going. I I know where you're going. This is like one of his topics. It seeds a planet, <laughs> and that's Dude. how it gives life. Could you imagine some aliens? <laughs> You Tell know, Earth started. Figure <laughs> just a floating <laughs> nut shot through space. <laughs> Landed Prometheus. on Earth. Boom. Prometheus would have been a very different movie. <laughs> Prometheus. <laughs> it's a cosmic skeet skeet right there. That's what that is. Cometheus. Cometheus. Hey, hey. Nice. Spermetheus. Spermy. Ah. Very good. Spermageddon. <laughs> Spermageddon. It's Ron Spermia. Ron. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Using my thing that I giggled at. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. Number three. Number, Number three. three. <laughs> February 15th, 1995. This is actually interesting. So this is... How the other things totally <laughs> sucked ass. <laughs> this one is actually interesting. This one's good. No. <laughs> it's Intel Sat 708. So if you've worked on the base and dealt with like NASA and stuff like that, then you, this one will kind of hit home a little bit, which three out of four of us have. Not putting you out. Huh, fourth wrong. guy. Hey, he makes more than all of us put together. I know he does. That's <laughs> not true yet. <laughs> all right. <That's> <laughs> <laughs> so on February 15, 1995, the Long March 
3B rocket in China was set to take off carrying the Intelsat 708 as a payload. The satellite was an American satellite created by Space Systems and uh, Laurel for Telecommunications. Yanny. Yanny. <laughs> Yanny. <laughs> Laurel. Yanny. Just after launch, the rocket veered off course. This is amazing. Truck a nearby village, killing six people in the village and injuring 23 others. Sure. Only six. <laughs> right. Yeah, there was uh, some. But from what I understood and read, they, they did like somewhat attempt to evacuate the village before launch but i don't know uh, all right so <clears throat> i wrote down here questions concerns about this let's move on answers after the launch failure the chinese investigation found that the inertial measurement inertial measurement yeah unit had failed however the satellite insurance companies insisted on an independent review committee as a condition of providing insurance yeah. Yeah, good luck. for future Chinese satellite launches. Laurel Hughes and other U.S. aerospace companies participated in the review committee, which issued a report in May 1996 that identified a different cause of the failure. So let's follow this up again. Chinese rocket has an accident with American payload. Americans basically do the review and report. Right. Uh, under the very strict guidance of the Chinese right. military at the time. Yeah. So the Chinese report was then changed to match the findings of the review committee. As a result of the investigation, the Long March rocket family improved the reliability and did not experience any other mission failures until August 2011. In 1997, the U.S. Defense Technology Security Administration found that China had obtained a significant benefit, quote, from the review committee and could improve their launch vehicles, ballistic missiles, and in particular, their guidance systems. You're welcome, China. In 1998, (laughs) the U.S. Congress reclassified satellite technology as a munition that was subject to ITAR, returning yeah, yep. export control from the Commerce Department to the State Department. In 2002, Laurel paid $20 million in fines and compliance expenses to settle allegations of violating export control regulations. No export licenses to China have been issued since 1996. An official of the Bureau of Industry and Security uh, emphasized in 2016 that no U.S. origin content, regardless of significance, regardless of whether it's incorporated into a foreign-made item, can go to China. What we learned, let's adhere to ITAR policies. That's just my, <laughs> yeah. like, we're big, like, so, in SpaceX, we're big on ITAR. Oh, yeah. we had a lot of, like, foreign nationals. We had a lot of, you know, so it's a big deal. So the, this one is ripe with conspiracies. So first thing, yes, I, I completely understand China could have been paid off with some trade secrets and some boosts in their technology to help cover up what really was the cause of the accident. Whatever. I don't give a shit about that. Was what it I- the Wu-Tan Laboratory? <laughs> Did you say Wu-Tang Laboratory? <laughs> Wu-Tan. <laughs> Not Wu-Tang. <laughs> oh, I, that's a whole new laboratory to me. Um, no, but the the... So this one has, and you can find these videos on YouTube. Um, this one has some amazing, unbelievably leaked uh, footage of the village that this rocket struck. Mm-hmm. So most most rockets, actually, I think all rockets now that are launched, even Chinese rockets, have an, a self destruct mechanism. So Wait, why do you call it a Chinese rocket? Because it <laughs> launched them from China. Oh. It has its own name already. You came, don't need to call it, it the came, Chinese rocket. It came from China. Um, anyway, <laughs> they, have, China. Uh, they have the self-destructs. They they blow themselves up. If they uh, certain metrics are met during flight, certain anomalies happen, or they get their remote detonation from the ground crew. So that that's already a thing that happens now. We even saw some of that in um, some Cape Canaveral launches way back in the 50s during mm-hmm. the test phases. You'd have some of these rockets would just fucking go all over the place out there. So they, <laughs> they, they also engineered that in NASA too. Now, here's the catch. The damage that was done to the city um, or to the mm-hmm. village, let's yeah. call it, a, I mean, the village is a bad choice of words. It was multiple story buildings. So I'm going to call it a, a small city. Okay. Um, and as fast as the camera crews that this footage was leaked from were on scene, 
uh, there is no way that the people were evacuated because there were hundreds of people in the city when those videos were being filmed. Hmm. So, no, the conspiracy I think that is more interesting in this one yeah. is the cover up of what actually happened and how many lives were actually lost hmm. and how detrimental this was to that whole community. China would never cover something like that up. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's your sound bite for the show right there Rod. pull that one that's fucking hilarious um yeah uh fuck all that watch that video because it is astonishing the the just it's you know that i love sometimes the natural disaster stuff i got into a yeah. rabbit hole on these types of incidents you know space accidents as brutal as we know that they are mm-hmm. i i fell into that rabbit hole that explosion from that rocket when it veered off was so fucking massive there's nothing that could have survived it within mm-hmm. a mile. I mean, it was it was ridiculous. It was yeah, crazy. this is actually the first time I ever even heard of this story. So I'm like reading. I read this story on a couple of different sites, and I'm just like, holy shit. Like, oh, yeah, it's nuts. I was like, oh, my God. And then I started reading into the whole politics of it and the ITAR and then how China was like, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. We're going to go ahead and thanks, United States, for yeah. <laughs> helping us with our guidance systems. And like, motherfucker. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's an interesting one. <laughs> Probably so. going to get our show shut down just for even talking about it. They're but. like, you know what you <laughs> should have used for your guidance? What should we have used? Shut up. See if you can see if we'll say it. <laughs> well, what you should have used. Why, why are you kicking me? What we, we should have used. You know? <laughs> um, is our show actually on in China? Yeah, no. yeah, we broadcast to China. Yeah. Really? 100%. Oh, yeah. Not anymore, but... <laughs> we used to until this episode. Well, <laughs> so what China requires... Um, as do many countries, not just China, but many countries require if your show is published explicit, um, but not if your show is published, not explicit, but has explicit content, you're immediately removed off of their airwaves. OK. However, we don't we publish with a tag of explicit for so all episodes, for yeah. every episode, no matter what. And they allow it through. What? <laughs> I'm just thinking a funny joke. Oh, you're thinking explicit, weren't you? <laughs> no, 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 no. I was just saying basically <laughs> racist. Pu- basically publish they just, explicit. <laughs> no, I wasn't thinking that. I was like, basically they just publish her show, but they just blur her in Texas. <laughs> That's Japanese porn, not they Chinese just, porn. They, we just blur got our your, dicks. Got your oh. Asians wrong, dude. <laughs> oh, that was racist? Um, totally. Oh. It was like incorrectly racist on, the, on top of that. Yeah. Only you would know that. I didn't. I don't know if they're Japanese or Chinese porn with blurred pubes. Well, or? I don't think, I don't know that I've ever seen Chinese porn, but in Japanese porn, they blur the dicks. Nothing else. Just no, they the blur dicks. They, they, too. They blur the, yeah, they blur the female genitalia. Oh, I only watch gay porn, so I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Very specific. Gay, I've never seen uh, the... Gay Chinese porn is gay. all I watch. Tack, welcome back. Japanese. We've broken, <laughs> we've broken so many rules tonight, but welcome back. <laughs> oh, good. So we're ready to move on to number two? Number, number two. two. February 1st, 2003. Yep. We should all know this one. Mm-hmm. Columbia. They have a space pro- program uh-huh. in Colombia. So in Colombia, Central See? America. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> in January 2003, NASA Space Shuttle Columbia lifted off. During liftoff, a piece of foam that was intended to absorb and insulate the fuel tank of the shuttle from heat and stop ice from forming was ripped off. The large piece of foam fell on the shuttle's left wing and created a hole. Though NASA officials were aware of the damage, the severity of it was unclear because of the low-quality cameras used to observe the shuttle's launch. Knowing that the foam regularly had fallen off of previous shuttles and had not caused any critical damage, NASA officials believed that there was nothing to worry about. But on February 1, 2003, when the Columbia attempted re-entry after its mission was complete, gases and smoke entered the left wing through the hole and caused the wing to break off leading to the disintegration of the rest of the shuttle seven minutes from landing. The entire crew of six American astronauts and the first Israeli astronaut in space died in the incident. Mm -hmm. What we learned, the shuttle's external tank was redesigned and other safety measures implemented. In July 2005, STS-114 lifted off and tested a suite of new procedures, including one where astronauts used cameras and robotic arm to scan the shuttle's belly for broken tiles. Do you know what that, that arm is called? Trivia is for the, any of you three. There's a, there's a name for that, that the arm. Canada? Very the, good. Yes, the yeah. Canada arm. Yes. Mm-hmm. NASA also had more camera views of the shuttle during liftoff to better monitor 
foam shedding. So this one was, <clears throat> I remember when this all was going on. So I remember when the launch happened, people were like, even then like news people were like, does something just fly off this thing? Cause you could see it perfectly something flying off. And how fucked up is that going to be with you up there? You know, you just went on there and they're like, Oh yeah, we saw some tiles falling off, but that's not uncommon. So right. tiles, tiles coming but. off is not that uncommon. What was uncommon about that was how big of a tile Bro- mm-hmm. or well how big of the, the fact foam, that it hit foam the wing that broke off it hit yeah. the wing so i mean it, i remember them talking about it on the news just like look at this look at this look at this let's rewatch it i never did that before so it was definitely a huge concern imagine being one of the the astronauts up there and i'm sure they're like are we gonna fucking make it back and they're like totally and they're like holy shit we gotta figure yeah, something was, out there was like one astronaut too that kept complaining like dude I see something on the wing <laughs> and no one believed him John Lithgow I know him yeah yeah, yeah. What, also great. William Shatner oh that's a good call the original show actually I, I have something that I'm not disputing it because I don't have a specific article to bring up or anything that in your part it said they just kind of gave it no mind no worry I had read or could have sworn I remember that they were actually did a spacewalk to try and go yeah. fix or at least inspect the damage am I completely wrong on that that did no, not happen um so no, they, they, that did not happen however it wasn't for Mandela effect it was no 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 it's okay <laughs> but the, well the, the reason you probably heard about that is NASA here I just watched like I, it's super ironic that you picked this topic because I just watched a special on the Columbia it's on YouTube it was like an hour and a half long special but it was fascinating as hell so mm. and that was not planned I had no idea what tax list <laughs> right. was going to be in fact that didn't even attack was coming in until a couple of days ago anyway um, the the entire so the ground crew that at NASA down here at Kennedy Space Center as well as over in Houston went through an entire drill to figure out okay Yes, we know about what happened. We, we know that there's something that has struck that underside of the wing. What can we do about it? So they ran through all of these different um, scenarios. One of them was the spacewalk. And to get to that particular section of the wing, because they did not have the Canada arm on there. They had a mm. hab that was in the vehicle, some kind of um, it was a it was a uh, experimental lab that they set up in the in the back in the trunk, so to speak, of the shuttle. It did not have the Canada arm during this mission, okay. during Columbia's mission. So what they would have to do is do a two astronaut spacewalk, basically to where the tether points were. One astronaut would have to be holding the other astronaut, literally holding the other person, while that person swung over the edge of the wing in free and open <clears throat> space. To inspect the damage, so, so they didn't. They couldn't so tether risky. from the from there even to get to that spot. It's okay. not like it's not like the so movies where you can about, tether and shoot. They, oh, so they, they also didn't have their to. propulsion. Yeah, they wanted to, but they couldn't. They so just they, couldn't. Okay. They didn't have those propulsion suits. Also, because of the other equipment they had for doing the the experiments they were doing, they did not have those shuttle suits that you've seen where it's like a seat chair you sit in and it's got all of the jets that can kind of move you around. Do they those actually those exist either. or are those just in Star 100, Trek? No, 100 percent. Oh, OK. <laughs> I mean, they're not as cool as in Star Trek, but they mm-hmm. definitely well, they existed during shuttle. They were for sure there. I think they've got some on the space station. as Why well. Why did they not have those? Because of the other equipment that was on that particular mission. It wasn't uh, deemed necessary oh, okay. because of the other stuff they had. Damn, that sucks. Um, so there there was a lot of other things, not to berate too long, but there were a lot of other things that they thought about doing. There was another shuttle sitting on the pad uh, f- prepping for another mission. They thought about what if we sent this other mission or this other shuttle up to get there to try to do the inspection and maybe rescue the crew. Um, but how the angles of orbit were working, the windows would not have lined up. They would not have had enough fuel to meet up and dock in space with the other the other shuttle. So they thought about the uh, Soyuz program. Can we set up a Soyuz? Same thing. The particular mission that the um, that the Columbia was on was at a different angle and no other possible rocket could have made it to them in time with enough fuel and enough ability to get that many crew members back. It was an impossibility. So they had they, they really had no choice. The other thing was they, they thought about sending them to the space station again. Yeah, I was just going to ask, what about the ISS? It's not like just take a left at the fork in the road. They don't have enough fuel to make it to the ISS because you would have to have so many hours of burn in, in orbit to change your orbit and your your perspective to make it to meet with the space station. That was also an impossibility. They just couldn't do it. They would run out of fuel and not even be halfway there. 
they couldn't they couldn't meet up with it. Yeah. So it was a perfect storm of bad scenarios to do a rescue mission, to do a uh, alteration of their mission, their course. They, they just they had no choice. So the answer that NASA ended up with after they showed their dice and said we couldn't do anything else was that we were going to have to risk the return entry and, and see how it goes. So unfortunately, it turned out very bad yeah but it wasn't for lack of trying the teams <clears throat> okay. i'm giving nasa credit it, originally i'm like well fuck they did know about it you know what the fuck that's but what no, i thought maybe they, they knew about it and they were like eh, it'll be all right no, but they, clearly they wanted no. to try and find any other way yes. but there just wasn't one they invested from how this documentary portrayed it nasa invested every resource that they could possibly afford to include their foreign partners to try to figure out a way to get something to look at they even tried um and they were successful at changing a satellite in space um it was a spy satellite a military spy satellite for the u.s to look at the uh, shuttle they got the shuttle but they couldn't see it wasn't high enough resolution to see exactly what they wanted to see so uh, it was yeah. undeterminable so it, unfortunately just it was a perfect storm of a failure there's That's nothing crazy. they can do. Did, yeah. did you guys ever get a chance to go see the Columbia yes, storage room? I know you were going to bring that up. I did not. You did Tell not us get all to about go. Columbia oh, storage so room. Okay. So in if you work at the Space Center, uh, you, you have an opportunity to get on a list and go take a tour of a special room in the VAB, the super big building that everybody recognizes. Vehicle yes. assembly building. Yeah. If yes. you go in there, you can take an elevator lift to like the 23rd floor or something. It's like a really weird floor number, but they have a room where they have set out all of the shrapnel and wreckage from the Columbia. Mm -hmm. So I've actually had an opportunity to go sit in a room with what's left of that vehicle. It's set up like a museum though, right? Isn't it like it's, a memorial? It's not. No. So, it's not? Oh, okay. um, I mean, it's, it, they, they of course draw honors to the crew that was on when it sure. went down. And, but other than that, I mean, it's, it's a room where they, it was a workspace. They brought all of the equipment back and panels and pieces and everything they brought into this one room. So the one thing that is very museum like is that you don't get to just go. It is a guided tour. You are with a NASA representative and you, you can't like leave the room. It's very controlled. And this is not open to the public, correct? correct. This, this is, is just this is only for center employees, Kennedy Space Center employees. Yeah, you have to get on the list. You got to get invited up there. So um, it's I, just it worked out. That I'm so jealous. I never got that chance. And oh, let me rephrase man. that. I had the chance, but I deprioritized it. Yeah, uh, I'm so upset that I, I did that. They didn't pay me enough money to deprioritize it. Yeah. <laughs> That's I mean, I love me that job, but. <laughs> But it's um, so but they do have in addition to this, I, I'm going to call him a tour guide. I mean, they're Columbia experts. I mean, that's their job. That's all they do now is they're just they know everything about it. And they have on the wall this. It's a chart that lays out every single thing that happened from initial reentry radio contact to pieces and sensors starting to fail to where we lost contact. But. Other than the loss of life, there is one fucking unbelievable thing about that whole crash and the reentry and the breakup. Other than the crew, there is not a single injury or death on the ground. And they found yeah. wreckage from California to Texas. Yeah, there was not I thought a it was single person. I I, Which I, seems too much for me, but. No, but I mean, right. California, 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 Texas, Texas about that's 2000. about 2000. Yeah. No, that's maybe 1800. Yeah. That's probably close to 1500. But uh, Mr. So, fucking science. Over okay. I've made that drive a few times from here to California. <laughs> oh, okay. Hey, geology cliff. <laughs> yeah. Geology. Geology. <laughs> yes. Because I rock. These are sedimentary Holy rocks. I rock. Fuck, I messed that one up. Uh, <laughs> Geography cliff. Fuck it. Forget it now. But, Jesus. <laughs> but so in addition to that, of course, it's, it's a basically a miracle that nobody was even injured nothing not an injury not a death nothing was attributed to again of course yeah. except for the crew however had it been and i don't remember the exact number but it was like four seconds if it had started to break up like four the other number that's coming to mind is like 12 seconds a very small window of time it would have just pepper sprayed you know a thousand mile an hour hot metal into houston would have just been mm -hmm. through the entire city. It just yeah. 
It probably would have been into the hundreds of thousands of injured and death had it been just what I, 10 uh, seconds later. Getting past the somberness of the loss of life, that's that's in and, and, you know, how bad that impacted the space program in general, because we all know what followed, you know, shortly after that whole thing was the decommissioning of the space program or the space shuttle programs. Um, what I found amazingly interesting about that whole thing is when when something when, when something comes out of orbit gets into our atmosphere and slows down, what do you hear? Doom, doom. You hear the sonic booms. Yeah. So when a vehicle is traveling faster than the speed of sound, which is 764 or 8 miles an hour, something like that, when it's traveling faster than that and it slows down and breaks that sound barrier on its way down, you hear the sonic booms for a gigantic area around that object based on its mass. All right? So if you have a baseball that's doing that, It'll still break the that sound barrier as well, and it'll still make sonic booms, but your sonic booms are considerably smaller and aren't mm-hmm. as heard that far. Something as big as the shuttle, you hear for hundreds yeah. and hundreds of miles who, that high in the air. Who misses that, like, wake up at three in the morning? Boom, boom. We still we get, like, get them. What with the, the yeah. fuck was When the that? first day just come back from space. I've never, yeah. I have never, at least in the recent years, since the shuttle, I've never been woken up or remember hearing well, it. Usually like during I the only day remember it during the shuttle you lose, time. You lose your hearing with old age too, Ron. So, I mean, there's that. <laughs> <laughs> there's Scooby Horse. Um, but what I found interesting about that whole thing is that the eyewitnesses, after you know the media figured out what was going on and people figured out that the shuttle was deteriorating and everyone could see see it. I mean, it was visible, mm-hmm. perfectly clear skies through that whole stretch of New Mexico, Texas, everywhere they could see it. Mm-hmm. Um, the eyewitnesses, and you can hear it on some of the videos that you can still see now, is this very light rumble. All right. And something that high in the atmosphere, you should not be able to hear. So that makes people question what was the sound. Yes. And the <laughs> no, the interesting part about that is as the shuttle was deteriorating, every nut, every bolt, Every panel, every cockpit item, every sound barrier. all of them at separate times as they were slowing down through that wind were breaking the sound barrier, causing this constant sonic boom that just lasted in certain parts of the U.S. If you were in the right spot, lasted it for like minutes. A vibration, I bet. Yeah, it was like a deep vibration, but in the distance from a long way away. Some would be loud, some would be quiet. Some, you know, it was just this constant roar. I mm. found that that little piece of physics. Mm. Really pretty, that's pretty awesome. fascinating. Sad as it was, that's still kind of, kind of something yeah. that's neat to, to you know, think about the physics side and the science side of it. All well, right. boys, I say, should we, should we stop nerding out over Columbia? <laughs> I should guess we? so. All right, so we got one left. We're at number one. Number one. Number one. All right, this is July sixteenth, two thousand thirteen. This is the ISS Expedition Thirty Six. I'm sure you guys probably know about this one. It's kind of a big deal. Nope. Kind of a big no, deal. No idea, actually. <laughs> well, then you'll find this fascinating. <clears throat> so, during a spacewalk on the 36th ep- expedition to the ISS, Italian astronaut Luca Parmit- Parmitano? Parmigiano? Uh, Parmitano. <laughs> Luca Parmitano. <laughs> Super Mario. Porn, blurred dicks. Luca Parmitano's helmet began to unexpectedly fill with liquid, and being in space, the water was free to float around the entire his entire head, eventually making it impossible for him to hear or speak to the other astronauts. Though it might seem like a solution to Parmitano's problem was obvious, alas, the water was not from a drinking bag, but from a leak in a liquid coolant system, and would not have been the safest thing to drink. Plus, uh, imagine drinking water that is floating freely in the air doesn't seem so easy. The spacewalk continued for over an hour before he was back in the ISS and free from his wetsuit, completely unharmed but in need of fresh towel, which he received promptly. Another thing that wasn't touched on here, um, it was moments away from he was moments away from passing out. So this guy was out doing a spacewalk. His helmet is filling up with water, and he's like. There's like water in here. And they're like, huh. Okay, well, is it an issue? Like, well, it's okay right now. And then there's becoming more and more and more. And now it's starting to get, because it floats in his eyes and he's having trouble seeing now. <clears throat> now to eventually, now his helmet is filling with water. And so now he can't even like, he's having to like move his face around just to breathe. And so 
Finally, he was like, I have to come in. Like, I'm going to drown in space. And so now he's like freaking out. He literally held his breath for almost two full minutes trying to get back into the hatch. So and he was like crawling. There's video of him with his own camera on there, him crawling back into the hatch and then getting him in there. And everybody's like, Pam, there's cameras inside the the ISS too, of them like waiting for him to get in there and shut the hatch. And they run in there, reach him and grab his helmet off. And he's just like, you know, it's like, it's crazy. Yeah. Water, water. And you've seen it in some of the videos, water, uh, it, whatever solid object it touches, it holds. So if, if it's filling up in your suit, I could only imagine that, you know, it would just hold on to your skin, yeah, stick to your skin, and, you know, move around as you're kind of moving your face around. Mm-hmm. You got to shake to, to try to at least free it up enough to take a breath or something mm-hmm. that, would be fucking terrifying. Yeah. yeah, I don't have that kind of calm. No, no. Says, uh, I wouldn't have stayed out there the hour. As soon as I saw a drop, I'm in, boys. Take take me in. <laughs> it says the accident and subsequent cancellation of the spacewalk made it to the second shortest spacewalk in the station's history. Hmm. <laughs> so, oh man, so that what, was what crazy. did we learn from? That? I have two question marks. I don't really know. I couldn't. It was hard to find um, stuff. What we learned. This was 2013, and the article I was reading, and a lot of things I were reading were like from 2014, and they were basically saying that they were still looking into it. Don't hook the P valve up to the breathe valve. Yes, I mean <laughs> lesson learned. Um, well, we got a new O ring on this type of right. <laughs> Yeah, that would be fucking terrifying. Was, the yeah. irony of drowning in space. Yeah. Yep, what, was a plug. What'd we plug? <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> we, we plug drowning in space. <laughs> I guess so. Um, <laughs> you ever seen, you guys ever seen the movie, um, it's one of my favorite old movies, uh, The Abyss? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Remember that um, that pink shit the, that you could breathe in? Yeah, it was yeah, made yeah. for going it's super real. deep. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> That's real? 100% real. really I want to know 100%. that 100% I mean for the movie actually you know what that's an interesting thing to look up for the movie we we should probably look up to see if it was a real thing that they did during the show but no that is 100% a real thing to do see, I don't know because I found conflicting information when I was looking into it a few years ago I found stuff saying yes it was real I found some saying no it wasn't real but when you see footage of that rat breathing water mm-hmm. like that's hard to so like it is a secondhand story, but I had a friend of mine who was a ranger, an army ranger. He went through a program where they experimented his unit wearing full face masks with a breathable, air quotes in studio, liquid oxygen solution of some sort. And they said he's he's gone through it. And he said, sure enough, you could breathe this liquid and he said he said the hardest thing though was that panic oh god it's like a I was just like with it i just can't imagine i I can't imagine getting myself to do it i I just it's like fucking like allowing yourself to drown i see Mm -hmm. i think that's the only way that it would work for me Uh, i would fight it and fight it and fight it it freaks me out and then i would just panic attacks thinking about it it. it would be the normal like (laughs) drowning response where finally my body's like i have to try and get something you lose that control you suck that in uh, yeah, I and know. then of course it's awful, and it's probably burns and just uncomfortable. But just like I'm alive, oh, do I have gills? I don't know. It seems <laughs> fucking weird. yeah. So this liquid breathing is a form of respiration in which normally air breathing organisms breathe an oxygen rich liquid such as perfluorocarbon. All right, sorry, I don't know. I'm not going to oh, pronounce these things. Perfluorocarbon. Yeah, perfluorocarbon. That sounds good. Um, you can the, breathe that and make yourself sound funny. The catch to that is this requires certain physical properties such as respiratory gas solubility, density, viscosity, vapor pressure, and lipid solubility, which some but not all plurofluoro chemicals, plurofluoro chemicals have. Thus, it's critical to choose the appropriate PFC for a specific biomedical application. All right, what that means is your your individual biology will either accept it or not based on what they're you're going to be using but it is absolutely a real thing Weird. so yes hmm. man that was a great list tack Fuck awesome. yeah, it was Thanks. it was somber as you said but it was it was good it was incredibly well delivered and respectful where it oh, needed nice. to be and then uh blurred dicks where it didn't need to be <laughs> well i um i forgot to cite my references but um a lot of it was just kind of copy and paste so i'm not that good of a writer no it's okay um is Britannica.com, Wikipedia.com, and a few other like random sites, but 
Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I use Britannica for a lot of mine. It's a great site for, mm-hmm. for research. No, fucking A, dude. Great list. Way to come back to the show and fucking yeah. and deliver. deliver. He's been touting this list for a while now. I'm excited to finally hear it. A few months. <laughs> this is a good this is a good list. Um, all right, boys. You ready to get out of here and do our after show? Show. Yep. All right. Uh, Tack, get another plug in for your show. What should our listeners do if they enjoy listening to your beautiful voice? <laughs> I think if you enjoy the beautiful voice, check out a very pretty podcast. Jimmy's on there too, but your voice is good. <laughs> yeah. Just kidding, uh, Jimmy. Jimmy and I Just are kidding, uh, Brady Bunch uh, rewatch podcast, and we basically break down the bunch one episode at a time. It's a good time, and we come up with fun conspiracies. So. That's awesome. I like it. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. And uh, you, you've heard us mention a few times, we do have a Discord server. You can get to through the website, twisted10.com. You said join Discord, pops it up. You can install it, not install it, whatever. It'll walk you through all the steps. Come in, say hey, and extra points. If you really want to go above and beyond, you really enjoyed the show, um, do consider joining the Twisted Council. It's a community we run through our Patreon, patreon.com slash twisted10. But we do, as Adam just mentioned, we do an extra after show that is only for our council members, for our patrons. So it's uh, 30 minutes to an hour, give or take. Um, it's a little bit more free form, just kind of hook off of the show, decompress, have some good times, talk some shit. But uh, yeah, if you enjoy it, just uh, check out the Patreon, throw us a few bucks. We would wildly appreciate it because we have at least one mic stand that we need replacing as of <laughs> right now. That's right, we do. I'm looking at it. Yep, Tack brought in one of his mic stands from the Brady, the very Brady podcast. I got it right that time. From the Brady <laughs> Studios. <laughs> the Brady Studios. Um, all right, guys, let's get out of here. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Um, on behalf of the Twisted Ten, thank you for listening. I'm Adam. I'm Ron. And I'm Josh. And to our host tonight, <laughs> I'm Tack. Thank you for fun. listening. See you guys later.